Hey folks, Jeff here at Back to Country. Well, if you can uh, see behind me, you can see we got doors. The doors are all 100% installed and we are completely dried in. So stick with us on this video and we'll show you how everything went. Well, we're happy to say that uh, FedEx just uh, dropped off the uh, missing parts from the uh, doors. Are you happy? <laughs> yeah, I'll be happier when them doors are up, but <laughs> it's progress. So uh, these are seven and a half feet long, solid uh, shafts, keyed shafts, and uh, they'll join together with a coupler to make a over 15 foot long jack shaft put them springs and everything on so at least we got all the parts now
So the doors are installed. I got no regrets that we paid somebody to do this. Who knows what they're doing? So could we have installed these doors? Yes, is the short answer. But like I said, I have no regrets paying somebody to do it because I know it was done right. They operate and run well. And uh, if I have any issues, I have them to call. But let's kind of go over the process. So the first thing you do, you take your bottom panel, put your hardware on it. Typically there's an instruction manual that tells you what hardware goes where. It's, that's all simple. Putting these doors together themselves is very simple. Uh, it's just a matter of putting hardware on and it's all in the manual which the manufacturer typically provides. So uh, as far as putting the door together, uh, that's the easy part. So basically the first thing you got to do, you've got that uh, bottom bracket down there with the red screws on it. The red screws are there to tell you that don't take that off because that cable that you can kind of see in between the track there and the door is under tension and that's how it's held onto the panel. If you unscrew those things, uh, that would be dangerous. So anyway, uh, put the hardware on there, your bottom brackets, and then you've got your styles. We have double styles. And of course in the styles goes the uh, roller. And then uh, we had single hinges that run across the middle. And on the other side, you have the exact same thing, your bottom bracket and your styles. So putting the hardware on, no problem. Put your first panel together, set it in place and then level it. Put a level across the, the top of it. Make sure it's level. If it's level, you're good to go. If not, uh, put something under it to, to uh, shim it so that it is level and leave it shimmed until the door is completely installed. And that just ensures that everything is level and goes straight up and down. Once that's done, then you're gonna set your, uh, your, your vertical tracks. So the vertical tracks, uh, they had these brackets that come back and bolts onto the uh, C purlin. Now this is how it's done for a metal building. For a, uh, um, wood frame, it's different. But for a metal building, this is how it's done. Now we can still see some daylight and everything between here, uh, that's all going to change. So this was a lesson learned. So we didn't know about different types of uh, weather stripping and uh, it would have been helpful if we did because we would have ordered that up front and it would have been much easier to put it on while the doors are being installed. Now, uh, we did order some reverse angle clip, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's uh, basically it's a rubber strip that goes on and, and a seal, reverse angle seal, I think it's called door seal or something. But that goes on your jams and then there's another seal that will go across the top. Uh, and it'll screw to that top door panel. And that's basically gonna seal all this to keep the, uh, the weather out. So all these little uh, cracks where you can see some daylight through there, uh, that's normal. And the weather seal will seal, the rubber seals will seal all that up. So anyway, Get your first door on, get your vertical tracks on, and all you do on the vertical tracks, they basically uh, put one screw in, I think they put a screw in about there, and then they started stacking panels. I don't even think they put a screw up top while they stacked panels. So 
Then you just start uh, stacking your panels and each one goes on top of the other one. Kind of line them up, screw all your hinges on. Now these are all pre-drilled and everything, so there's really a, not a whole lot to go wrong on that. And that's what I say, putting the door panels on, that's the easy part. So you stack them in the tracks, all except for the top panel. That one you'll put on later. So these have seven panels. They put six panels together and uh, then they started to go to work and this is where it gets a little more challenging. So the next thing they did is they started to uh, put on the horizontal tracks. And so the horizontal track uh, mounts together. Well, let me go up there and show you. Okay, so your horizontal track, this takes two people to do it definitely. So the first thing is that the, uh, it's got these track screws that go there and mount it together so it sits basically together with your vertical track. And then you've got this uh, piece of angle here, flag bracket I believe it's called. So it's got two uh, track screws that go here and then it's got a, a big bolt that goes back here. And that uh, sets that up. Let me think. So what this does, it, this holds up this whole piece of vertical track. So that's why I say somebody has to be, uh, you know, towards the back holding that piece up while the person uh, mounts all this together. And that is all that holds that. So two track screws here and a bolt back here. And uh, you can see that's got a slide adjustment, but uh, they didn't need that, I guess. So they set that down. And once that piece is on, that will hold up the, uh, the track by itself. And the other piece that has to go on is this head plate. And so uh, two screws there, a couple screws to the steel frame in the back. And uh, you know, you can also see they put in more screw there to, to hold this whole uh, vertical bracket. And uh, anyway, that head plate has got a bearing on it and that's where the shaft is going to go through uh, for your spring and everything. So uh, they put that together. That holds up the vertical track. Then they went ahead and put the springs on. And so basically to uh, put together the springs, this one has a solid shaft. And so on the outside, you've got your I don't know, a pulley, pulley, wheel, whatever, and that's where that cable, you can see the cable inserts right here and then it rolls around and you can see where it, when it winds up, it stays in the grooves, okay? Then you slide your uh, spring over as well and uh, let me move over to the middle. Okay, so on this side of the spring, you've got a bracket a bearing and that all mounts together and uh, then the shaft goes into a coupler there's keys in there there's keys on the other end too they do not uh, I don't believe they uh, put the coupler together at that point they just put all this assembled Put all that up there, right? Then they uh, started on one side. They put a pair of uh, like channel locks on here, I think, to lock it in place. And uh, started uh, putting some tension on that coil. They put approximately 50 turns which each turn is a quarter turn. 
So they put uh, 50 cranks on that thing uh, to get it initially started. Of course, they hooked the cable into it and all that, and once they got it cranked into position, then uh, the pulley, the pulley's locked on there. It's got set screws. Everything's got set screws. So it all gets locked together. This is where really the, you know, it's, it's more for the pros to do in my opinion. They did spray uh, like a chain oil all over the springs so they would turn better when they were tensioning them. But they put all that tension on there and, uh, and then they do the other side, same thing and lock it all together the whole bit and uh, basically lock that coupler together. And that uh, puts your tension on the door as your counterbalance so you can raise and lower it because if you don't have the uh, spring on there, I mean, this door is like close to 500 pounds. So uh, these are solid, well, not solid, they're steel uh, covered, so this, but it's completely wrapped. There's no open space. So front and back steel covered, sealed, whatever you want to call it. And then the end, the core is solid foam because uh, they're insulated. So all together, uh, this was close to 500 pounds. So too heavy to lift without those springs. Anyway, you can see up here, I was talking about daylight. I can literally put my hand between that door. Uh, that's gonna have a rubber seal that will close all that up. So once the springs are tensioned and everything, then they put the last panel on and uh, the styles at the top are adjustable. So they adjusted those out all the way to, I guess, push that as close to the frame as possible and uh, you know bolt everything together and then the door is in place then they raise the door so that the top panel goes you know up into the the channel so that gives them an idea of where to uh, to mount the the channel and then they can uh, start to and they kind of move over there now. Trying to move real slow on this thing because I'm up in the air and wouldn't be smart to run around fast and risk dying. <laughs> okay, so then we've got uh, brackets okay so what they did for the brackets they put a piece on the outside in the uh, the angle that was provided on there that screwed down and uh, they put a uh, a bolt through that and uh, so I'll show you the, so here's the bolt here that goes, goes through the back side and then they basically bolt it here. So you've got a bolt coming through there, bolts up here to angle it out. So that makes it rigid. They screwed a piece of that to the purlin and then determined the proper height and everything and uh, tightened everything up, put two of them in. So it's, it's very rigid. There's no uh, movement in that at all. And uh, that makes it fully adjustable. So when they're tuning the doors and making sure that the, uh, everything tracks well and looks like it's supposed to when they open the door all the way, uh, if not, they can move those over either way and adjust it and so 
they open the door and get it adjusted and at that point everything is fine tuning it's just a matter of making sure that the tracks uh, they they do go a little bit wider at the back they do that on purpose they said and uh, you know just making sure that the door runs smooth so that uh, they can open and close it uh, smoothly and and they do and uh, one challenge is on these springs because the uh, the springs have to lock to where a set screw goes into the keyway and so basically he said that he has to make four uh, four turns which is one full turn uh, to, to adjust it he can't adjust it on quarter turns because where the uh, main set screw has to sit on that key and so they adjusted it to where the door came up off the floor about an inch it you could close it all the way but then there was enough tension to lift it up and uh, then he gave me a choice he said I can either leave it like that or I can back it off for cranks and uh, so that it closes all the way I had them back it off so that it closes all the way uh, once we put the door openers and everything on it wouldn't be an issue either way that's just was my preference and so uh, the door openers we're going to use uh, will basically connect to the shaft outside that pulley and uh, there'll be a gear on that and that's they'll mount on the side of the door and that'll open and close it it'll also have an electronic lock that it'll throw just to you know lock it for extra security i guess and uh, it'll have a chain hoist that uh, if the power goes out or something that we can still open them manually uh, with a chain hoist and not have to lift them we could lift them pretty easily but i'm more thinking years down the road keeping it simple and uh, the price is not that much different so that's what we're going to go with when we order the doors but without electricity and everything there's not really uh, much point in worrying about it right now so that's kind of where we're at on that and uh you know i welded those uh pieces of purlin up there um to mount those brackets too and that worked out very well so it's all good i mean these doors are pretty awesome doors very happy with the doors not necessarily happening with the company and i'll explain that in a minute i mentioned this piece right here that the shaft goes through with the bearing on it uh, that was oh what they call it head the head bracket or something uh, bearing bracket in bracket I mean I've seen several different names for it bottom line is the ones that came from the factory were not the right ones so they were this is a one inch shaft one inch solid shaft there are two sizes for these commercial doors it's a one inch or inch and a quarter so they sent us one inch shaft the springs the pulleys everything is one inch for the for the shaft and then they sent us the head brackets inch and a quarter so the bearings were too loose to be functional which means the installers had to run back to their shop and get some one inch sizes that are different than the ones that were sent from the factory so the ones that were sent from the factory were actually two inches taller so this would have sat up two inches higher luckily it did not cause a problem 
they were concerned that it might, but uh, there was plenty of clearance so the doors don't hit or anything. And uh, it worked. If I bring these up there, you can see there's uh, plenty of clearance there. So it worked. However, that costs me uh, $120 extra for the parts. Plus I had to pay a $50 service fee or something for them to run back to town and get them uh, so and they were taxed so by the time we're done uh, it was like 180 bucks uh, for for those parts so not happy about that that's a screw up from the company that's two screw ups that they made so they sent the wrong head plates and they also sent the wrong or well they didn't send the shafts so we had to wait for that um so yeah and you could see i literally lifted that door with one hand so that's how well balanced those are so anyway uh yeah that's what i'm not happy about with these doors as far as the quality on the doors and everything uh, very happy with the quality. I mean these are we bought them because they're insulated doors and and that was the best price we could find for an insulated door and I mean when I say best price we could find it was thousands of dollars different not hundreds and so I think the best quotes we were getting these were probably three thousand dollars per door lower than what we were getting quoted elsewhere. I mean, some bids we got, uh, qu quotes were actually double the price. So, uh, you know, the best price. Uh, and then, like I say, as far as the quality of the panels, I mean, these panels are awesome. I have no complaints about the panels. The windows are awesome. Let me go down and show you the, the windows. So these windows are double pane windows. I'm not sure if they're nitrogen filled or not, uh, but for an insulated door, you definitely want quality windows. And uh, these windows are Good quality as far as I'm concerned. Like I say, they're double paned. Uh, so you got glass on the inside and the outside. They're good quality tempered glass, I guess. And uh, real happy with that, uh, the whole build as far as the doors are concerned. So these doors are made by a company called Ideal. And uh, they're subordinate to Coplay, and Coplay makes all the doors for uh, overhead doors, I believe. So it's one of the top manufacturers. And uh, yeah, the quality of the of the doors themselves, the tracks are are fine. Everything's good. The issue is just poor quality control from the company or from whoever packages everything up. So, you know, a couple of wrong parts, a couple of missing parts, that's enough to, to screw up a job. I mean, we waited several weeks to get the shafts in after we already waited months to get the doors. And then, uh, you know, we couldn't wait again. Once the installers are on site, they want to get the job done. So. Uh, the only choice we had was to pay for different head plates for them to uh, install these doors. So, not happy about that. May, uh, well, I don't know that it'd do any good to call the company, but it is what it is at this point. The so three doors very high quality, high R value. 
these are R18.9 so that should pay dividends over time plus install you might be wondering how much did that cost well it costs a lot so for the doors it was fourteen thousand two hundred and eighty eight dollars and fifty eight cents so they weren't cheap but like i say that was uh, the very best price we could find on this quality of doors now we did get a rebate off of that so that's how much i paid but then uh we got fourteen hundred dollars and change back that we did have to spend in the store but we used that on that hybrid water heater so it's all good and then when we spent the money on the hybrid water heater we paid like three hundred dollars cash out of pocket and we got another rebate which is uh we've sent in the paperwork for we're waiting on it and that was almost 200 bucks so uh the gift that keeps on giving i guess but let's forget the rebate and let's just go with the normal price fourteen thousand two hundred and eighty eight dollars and fifty eight cents and that was delivered to the store and then we had to drive up to missouri to get them i'm not counting the price of gas or anything like that we did a little camping on the way and we enjoyed ourselves. It was a nice trip, so I got no complaints on going and getting them. And we'll probably look forward to going up there again. And next time I think we're gonna go to Branson and you know, check out Branson. A lot of good stuff going on there all the time. So we'll make that a fun trip. But anyway, $14,288.58 installation plus the parts that we had to buy one thousand one hundred seventy nine dollars and ninety cents making the grand total fifteen thousand four hundred sixty eight dollars and forty eight cents so that's basically fifty one hundred and change per door fifty one thirty something i believe but uh 5,100, 5,200 even per door, that's a fair price considering everything. And that's installed. So could we have saved 1,200 bucks by installing them ourselves? Yes, but like I say in the end, I'm very happy with the decision to hire the pros. Uh, just watching them do their work, which I watch the entire time because I like to watch and learn. And so if I do need to do any minor maintenance to these doors or whatever, I'm fully capable. But, uh, you know, they're under, I don't know, I'll guess some kind of warranty for now, probably for the next 90 days or something. I have no idea what their warranty is, but uh, we use Brothers. Uh, I think it's Brothers Overhead Door out of Kilgore, Texas. Very happy with their work. They did a good job. Their price was fair. And uh, I got no complaints on their, their installation. Like I say, my only complaint in all of this is with the, the factory. And it's more a uh, shipping quality control issue than uh, quality of product or anything. So... We're all good with that. Now the other thing uh, that could have cost us money, this scissor lift, luckily our contractor friend uh, let us borrow it for free. So that saved us probably $250 on the install right there. So, uh, you know, overall, I got no complaints. These are high quality doors and uh, we are now completely dried in. So next step, we're gonna clean this place out. We've got a bunch of uh, scrap pieces and what laying around that we've gotta get out of here. Clean this place up and start prepping for spray foam. <laughs> 